everyone. I'm Tamara Banks. Welcome to Dialogue Denver DA. Mitch, great to see you again. Good to see you, Tamara. So we have some really incredible guests here with us. I'm so proud to introduce Brandy Jennings and Alexis. Thank you so much for being here from The Haven. My first question is, can you sort of tell us what is The Haven? What do you do? The Haven is a residential um, facility in which um, there's 40 beds at the Haven residence and there's a mom's house that has 16 beds. And it's a, a therapeutic, a modified therapeutic treatment facility. Um, what we do is we learn how to live life on life's terms and we learn how to live without the use of drugs. And um, for people, you know, we call it the last house on the block because most women that come to the Haven um, have been incarcerated and chained by their disease um, for a very long time. And most of them believe that, uh, you know, they deserve to be incarcerated or that they're bad people because they can't stop using drugs when in fact um, addiction is a disease. And, you know, when we, when we learn that and we learn how to fight the disease, much like cancer, you know, we get our our, you know, cancer patients get treated with chemotherapy and we get treatment at the Haven and we learn how to live um, in remission, basically. I think one of the unique things that I found about the Haven is that it's the, was it the first uh, treatment center in Colorado where the mothers could bring infants with them? Correct. Why was that so important to do? It's important because a lot of mothers avoid treatment because they're worried about what will happen to their children. And so um, it gives them a chance to have their, their babies with them and it breaks the cycle. You know, a lot of, a lot of parents, you know, are born into the disease, or a, a lot of children are born into the disease of addiction mm -hmm. and it, the cycle continues. And when you bring a baby in and you treat the mother while the baby's getting uh, call star rated care, you're, you're breaking that cycle. You're breaking the cycle not only for the mother, but for the offspring as well. And so how do women, how do you get there? Are you referred to by court? Or, and how did each of you, I'd like to hear your stories too, how that happened. Okay, well I um, was a habitual drug offender and uh, most of my felonies came out of the state of Washington. I ran to the state of Colorado um, avoiding prosecution. And of course I you know, thought I could run from my um, addiction and if I just got out of this place then everything would be okay. And, and that's not the way the disease of addiction works. And so I caught another charge here, um, a drug-related charge, and I was offered treatment, which is something that I, I hadn't been offered before. And um, I was offered the Haven, and I accepted it. I was facing 24 years, and I figured anything was better than 24 years as a habitual offender. Wow. And that's how I got to the Haven. And had I not gotten there, I would have kept believing that I was doomed to die a slow death um, at the hands of drugs. And Alexis, how did you get to the Haven? Well, I fought for the Haven. Um, I didn't get offered the Haven. I also am a habitual offender. And all my cases were out of Nevada 10 years ago, and then I continued my addiction here in Colorado and caught a whole lot more charges. And um, so I fought for a year in jail to be able to go to the Haven. I. They were not wanting to give it to me at all. They thought prison was a better idea. They thought I would run from the Haven and continue doing what I was doing before. And I finally had a, um, a public defender who believed in me and really fought tooth and nail for me to get to the Haven. And you didn't run. What made the difference? Why did you decide to stay? Well, the beginning, my choice was my son. My son was what kept me going every Every week he'd come visit me, and he's what kept me going in the beginning. Yeah. And then it just changed everything. My attitude, how I thought, how I felt, everything just changed. And he's five years old now, right? Yes. <laughs> Mitch, I imagine having a, an organization like this here in Denver really helps your office, too, in figuring out what the 
best punishment, if you will, is, is for offenders? Well, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because it's kind of changed over the course of the time that I've been in the DA's office. Obviously, it used to be something that we would really push for, Pier 1 for men, the Haven for women. Certainly, if there was somebody that was pregnant or somebody that had a brand new baby, you know, there's always concerns about the baby's health, too, and that's one thing that the Haven is excellent about. I've been to the Haven many times and gone up and taken tours and you know, there's the whole baby room and uh, there's place for the toddlers and they're taken care of so the mothers can work on what their issue is. But I think that people need to understand and, you know, I'll get these things, well, why don't you just throw away the key type attitudes. I know with drug court I got emails about that. You know, was, why are you coddling these criminals? And, you know, the, the thing about the penitentiary is there is no treatment there. And so when somebody goes there untreated, they come out untreated and they go back into that lifestyle because they really don't have a lot of other options uh, and then they're back in front of us again and you know you can tell they say they're they're habitual criminals they're not criminals at all and it's what it's the drugs that makes them a criminal the addiction that makes them a criminal even if they're stealing or doing something to feed that habit without that habit they are productive members of our community and so you have to recognize that and you have to provide for a way to get treatment and the Haven is you know of all the drug treatment programs that I know about in this state even our drug court the Haven is the place that has the most success that is studied that is in partnership with the University of Colorado and it makes a difference the other side of the Haven, too, is that some of the people are coming out of prison and into the Haven. Uh, so people are getting that choice coming out. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I've been to their graduations and they are a big deal. And the people speak quite long and they, they are loud. But it's, a, it's something, it's a celebration as opposed to just all of this negativity that has gone on sometimes for somebody's entire adult and maybe entire teenage life. Mm -hmm. This is a step forward for everybody, including the community. I mean, your average drug addict is going to commit about 100 crimes a year to feed that habit, 60 to 120 on average crimes a year. And those crimes go away if you treat them and are successful. So it is a huge benefit to our community that the haven is there. It sounds like a pretty incredible place. Can you tell me what, what's an average day like? What, what happens? So it depends on what phase you're in, first of all. But an average day consists of getting up, um, having breakfast together. It's a, it's a therapeutic community, which means that we're there for each other. We, we rise together. We fall together. We triumph sisters. together. We're sisters, you know, and we, we eat as a family. And, um, we you set know. set up as a family. Right. We do everything as a family. Right. Nice. And we're, you know, in, in treatment during the day. We go to classes. We have uh, relapse prevention, uh, cognitive behavioral skills. You know, you meet one-on-one -on -one with your counselor. You're working on um, different assignments to get to the next phase. So you're basically um, working little by little, step by set, step to become a functioning member of society. Sounds like there's like, this infrastructure of a support system there to catch you when you when you need that help. Yes, right. So I imagine are there phases of the treatment, and then if so, what what are each well, look the, like? Well, the first phase is um, OT. What is it OT? Yeah, yeah OT. <laughs> OT. Sorry, <laughs> is orientation, which is OT, and in that phase, you basically have um, well, you have to earn back everything when you get there, like makeup, hair, you know, be able to do your hair, you know, and those are things that you earn and progress as you move on your phases. And so as an OT, you are with your sisters, your OT group always. And that includes going to the bathroom. I mean, it's just a big giant. You're supported. Yeah, all supported the time. at all times. And it's really neat. I mean, you get close bonds with those women and you learn what they're, you learn what each other's issues are and behaviors, and you're able to point them out to each other. Right, and hold it, each other accountable. Yeah. Right. And when you move, move, and you do assignments and stuff like that to move phases, and when you progress, 
they make kind of a big deal of it. Right. You know, and it's always fun. Those are always right. really fun times for me. And when you go on to phase one, you have um, a little bit more um, freedoms to like go around the house by yourself a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, you're still not allowed to have a whole lot of contact with your family on the outside, but you know, it, which is you needed. earn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you, you kind really of have to get away it. from that from environment influence. that sort of supported yeah. the bad behavior, the poor choices maybe. Right? Or no yes. matter how well intentioned mm -hmm. it, it is, it's, mm -hmm. you know, you have to distance yourself from everybody because you're looking on the inside now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And learning to be who, learning who you are again. Right. How you, you know, one of the things I heard, and I, you know, I go to the fundraisers, I've spoken at them, and you know, they, they, this is Friends of the Haven. If you want to support the Haven, Friends yes. of the Haven is the mm -hmm. way to do it. Go online, make a donation. It will be, it will, it will go, it'll be, it will go towards something very, very good. Mm -hmm. But I think that one of the things that drove home to me was one of the people said, "I learned how to have fun again." Yes. Yeah. I had lived in this miserable addiction for so many years, and I learned that I could have fun again. That the that the, this world, that life, all of that had just a simple thing. I'm having fun. Absolutely. I mean, those are the things that are lost in drug addiction. Those are the things that people think they can never get back. Mm -hmm. And to hear that and to see somebody say that, and you know they've been through some things that, that we wouldn't even want to hear about. Right. But I learned how to have fun again. And that's these steps and those stages. And hopefully then that has that impact on that child that may be there at the Haven or is being taken care of and coming and visiting and keeping that family unit, that idea that we're, we're passing this on to the next generation is the key to this place. Mm -hmm. And I imagine there's got to be some highlights to the, the treatment, the things that really have been most impactful to you. Alexis. Absolutely. You know, as, as Mitch was saying, it's, it's absolutely, you know, rock climbing and whitewater rafting and taking 40 Skiing. women, you know, camping and, mm -hmm. and we have so much fun together. And, and that's, that's absolutely, you know, something that we all say, you know, we learned how to have fun. We learned how to live life on life's terms without the use of drugs, which is something that we didn't know was possible. And it's just, you know, and then graduation is a huge deal. You know, and it's open to anybody. And, you know, like he was saying, uh, Friends of the Haven supports the, the modified uh, therapeutic community. And without them, we wouldn't have the funds to learn how to have fun in recovery. You know, the, the whitewater rafting and the rock climbing and the camping trips and, and skiing. And, you know, those cost money. Right. You know, and, and it's so important to do that mm -hmm. because, you know, you've got to learn how to, how to have fun. Yep. If there's not something to work for in life, if you don't have goals, if you don't have aspirations, if you don't have something to fight for, then you're just prone to staying stuck. Alexis, uh, I'm curious how many other treatment facilities have you gone to and tried and, and maybe haven't worked and what made the difference at the Haven? Well, I've been in three different treatment facilities. Um, the first one I paid for, I was real young and paid a lot of money to go there. and it didn't work at all. I, I don't think I was ready. Um, it was more like a ranch. It was like a, you rode horses and stuff like that. And then the second one was a much longer one. And that too was just not as much support. And the Haven is the final one I went to and that has been the best place that I've been. Um, the reason for that is the support network that there is people there that have for sure lived through everything that you've been through. Everything that I could ever say, people, there was somebody there that understood because they've done the same thing, you know, and you get so close to the women there, they're able to tell you when you are, when you are lying, and they can tell when you're lying, they can tell when you're, when you're being fake, they can, they pull out all that stuff all that stuff that you keep locked in mm -hmm. and you're able to be more real with yourself and with the world. And now you're working at Village Inn. Yes. I bet that's a lot of fun. 
always. Yeah, that's a great place. And, and um, um, tell us a little bit about where you've come from, Brandy, and where you are now, because you have a unique position and perspective about the Haven. I do. You know, I, um, I, I didn't use drugs until I was 23 years old. And I had children at a very young age, and I fell fast and I fell hard. And um, I ended up doing four prison terms, and you know, a lot of felonies, all drug related. Finally, got to the haven, um, but I, I worked, and I always worked in the construction industry. I was a welder by trade, and so when I got to the certain phase, which is the transition phase, um, when where we transition back into society, I was able to get a job uh, with a general contractor. And eventually, I was ready with their support to go out on my own and follow my dream of owning my own company. I'm, I'm a licensed general contractor for residential and commercial, and I own BFAB Construction. Um, it's 100% my company that I founded, started, and um, you know I've been incorporated for five years, very successful um, with some big clients. I, I do work for the university as well, and you know one of the things I'm able to give back to the women is you know, when I need work crews or, or stuff, you know, I can go back and I can get the women and bring them to work to help with labor and to show them that anything is possible. Wow. So That's pretty incredible. And you're on the board of directors. I am. I'm on the board of directors for Friends of the Haven. And Friends of the Haven is, uh, you know, we support the therapeutic community that is the Haven and the Baby Haven. And, um, you know, like was mentioned before, we were able to fund a project that built the Baby Haven, which is a Qualstar rated, you know, child care facility where the babies can go and get premium care while their mothers are being treated and learning how to become productive members of society. It's a win-win. And so I, I bring a unique perspective as a, a Haven client. You know, it's, it's interesting because I went to Mullen High School, and Mullen High School is down the street from Fort Logan, right directly down the hill. And the Haven sits up on the hill there. Hmm. It's part of the old fort. It's part of Fort Logan. Uh, there's some incredible things that go on in Fort Logan. And when I was a kid, I always thought, you know, Fort Logan, it just seems to be an abandoned place. <laughs> right. And there, my neighbor was a psychiatrist that worked up there. And, you know, obviously, state hospital aspect and all of that. But to take those old buildings and to turn them into a place that makes a difference mm -hmm. for people. I mean, if you think about this, the idea of coming from a prison term and then eventually owning your own construction company and bringing other people along, and they both do that. Because at the Village Inn, I guarantee you, there's people, the people running the Village Inn are going, whoa, great employee, could I get more right. reliable part of this structure, all of that. And that's why the Haven is so important. And again, you just can't forget the kids, those babies. There are people that volunteer to come in and rock those babies hmm. and make sure that those babies are healthy, that type of thing. And the Haven itself really, I think, stands for something in our community because I remember the day they opened it. And I was there, and it was a big celebration, and it was a coming together of a public-private partnership with the university, the Anschutz Center, uh, and all of those people that provided grants and that gave donations to, to do the construction and to build this place. And then I've been back to see it actually the way it's working, and and you know, I've taken tours, and Bill Wynn's great guy has taken me there. Yes. <laughs> and and it, it, it just, to see something that the community recognized was necessary, that studied by the University of Colorado and supported there as well, and to make this kind of difference in, I mean, the, these are regular folks, and, right. and, and it's made a huge difference in their yes. lives. And you know, as the show goes on, and I will get close, I just want to thank them for coming and telling their story. It's hard to do, but it's really important that we talk about this kind of thing mm -hmm. and that we make a difference and do the kinds of things that the Haven does. I mean, like you're saying, it takes the whole community. We can't just throw people away right. and ignore them because as we've been discussing, it's we know somebody or there's right. somebody in your family that has uh, an, an addiction, right. disease, and, illness. And we're everywhere, mm -hmm. you know. And, and like I was saying at the break, you know, we're doctors, we're lawyers, we're, we're pharmacists, we're nurses, we're construction owners, we're in the food service industry. You know, we wash your cars. We, 
we're your children, we're mm -hmm. your aunt, we're your uncle, we're your mother. You know, we are everywhere. The disease of addiction is not uh, biased. It can affect anyone, and it does. I'm curious, are there outpatient programs as well? Absolutely, absolutely. There's an outpatient. So after transition, um, it goes orientation, phase one, phase two, transition, and then OTC, which is the outpatient therapy community. And there's outpatient services, and, uh, you know, that's part of the transition into into society. And, you know, either someone will finish out their parole there or, you know, after going through the residential, or they'll finish out their sentence and, and most of the time get an early release from their sentence. Um, and, you know, depending on how long their sentence is, that's how long they'll stay at OTC until after graduation, so. If somebody is watching right now and they know someone or maybe they are really struggling with an addiction and they are facing some really tough choices, what would you say to them to, to, to give them encouragement to know that there is help out there, that the Haven can, can you just call the Haven and say, I need help? Is that possible? You know, you can. You can call intake at the Haven. Um, it's listed. And there's also several drug helplines to call as well that can uh, generally direct you. There's addicts that volunteer. In fact, I volunteered on some phone services for a 12-step program for a very long time that take calls. Um, there's, you know, Narcotics Anonymous. There's, there's places to go. There's, I would say that you never have to use again. You call a number. You call a helpline, you call 911, you call whoever you have to call to get out of that lifestyle. And I promise you that somebody on the other line is waiting to take your call and to help you stay clean. Just so you, it's, it, and this, we're talking about the Haven is for women and children, but remember there's Pier 1 for yes. men. Mm -hmm. There's Synergy out there on Fort Logan's campus as well. And that's for teenagers. So this idea that, you know, this show's about the Haven and the Haven is for women and it's a great thing. But, you know, if there's a man out there watching, if there's a teenager out there, you know, we all have these issues. Everybody has these problems. We have to recognize that. And there is help out yes. there in the community. There's, there's help out there for you. So don't give up. Don't you know, you don't have to get in trouble. You don't have to be headed to the penitentiary. Right. But sometimes that's what it takes yeah. to get people to get into this program yes. and then to have the kind of success that these two ladies have had. And then quickly, as, as if somebody wants to help out, who do they contact? Friends of the Haven? You can call Friends of the Haven mm -hmm. or you can call Haven Intake. Um, for the males, you can call Pier 1 Intake. And for teenagers, there's Synergy mm -hmm. intake. Um, everything's listed online in the in the phone book. I don't know the phone numbers by heart, but I could definitely right. get them for anybody. <laughs> That's right. Friends everybody. of the Haven has a website. If yes. you want to donate and help Please Friends donate. of the Haven, support the Haven, you can go online, nice. PayPal type. You know, you can donate. There's different events. Mm -hmm. They keep Our track of what's going on. There's videos that yeah. tell very compelling stories about the Haven. Uh, PBS has done pieces. I mean, a lot of people have done pieces on the Haven because the Haven is such a compelling place. And the stories are just so true to everybody. They touch everybody. So yeah. Friends of the Haven is the place to go. Google it. Go online if you want to yes. help. That's the way to do it. All right. Ladies, thank you so much for your hard work. I appreciate you coming here and telling your story. You're thank really you. a true inspiration. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks uh, for joining us on this edition of Dialogue Denver DA. I'm Tamara Banks, and we will see you next time.